Assalamu alaikum students, this is Farwa Batool, your O-level computer science instructor and welcome to my channel Learn to Teach. So, as we are talking about flowcharts and its examples, in this video I am going to share another example with you that is already mentioned in your book as well, Concert Ticket Sales. Yes, we are going to make a flowchart for this and I am going to explain each and every step. How to make a flowchart for this particular example. Okay, the example is tickets are sold for a concert at $1.20 each. If 10 tickets are bought, then the discount is 10%. If 20 tickets are bought, then the discount is 20%. No more than 25 tickets can be bought in a single transaction. So what you have to do, you have to make a flowchart showing an algorithm to calculate the cost of buying a given number of tickets. It means that it must be flexible enough so that if a user comes into your system, it can enter any of the number of tickets he wants. And then you have to calculate the discount according to the question or according to the information that you are provided with. Okay, so let me just start with the working. We all know that whenever we start a flowchart, we use the terminator flowchart symbol that is a round shape rectangle like this. The corners must be round. Let me just make it again for you with a more broader outline like this just make the corners round okay if it is a start then you have to write down start inside the symbol okay this is the start of your flow chart now the first thing is that you have to validate when you are taking input from the user you must keep one thing in mind that the number of tickets that a buyer or a user books must not be greater than 25 this is a validity okay so after start what we have to do our system must give an output message to the user there must be an output message to the buyer or a user so that he will know that he has to enter number of tickets that he wants so in order to do that what you have to do you have to just output a message you can simply write your message can be, I'm just copying the wordings of your book. Otherwise, you can just change your wordings. Depends upon whatever you want to ask to the user or the buyer. How many tickets? Let's just ask the buyer, how many tickets would you like to buy? It means that we are giving an option to a user that he can write its own number of tickets this is flexible enough a user can book any number of tickets but remember that it must be in the range of 1 till 25 so we need to check the input first of all whatever the input is you have to save it in a variable upon taking upon just showing this message then you have to wait for the input or the number of tickets that will be entered by the user. So what you will do, you will input that number of tickets entered by the user in a variable N or any uh, letter or any name you can give to that variable. So here I'm just using a letter N. This is, I'm writing down here a variable to store number of tickets that the buyer wants so n is basically a variable the value of n is basically the input that the user gives it can be if the user wants 20 tickets 
the 20 value will be stored in this variable. If the user wants 7 tickets, the 7 number will be stored in the variable. So the variable is just to store the number of tickets that our user wants. Now, after saving it in a variable, now you have to check the validity of the variable n. What it means? It means that according to the question, we know that a buyer cannot hear. To see this, a buyer cannot book or can't have 25 tickets, cannot buy 25 or more tickets. He can buy within the range of 1 till 25, but not more than that. So let's suppose if a user enters 0 or a user enters 27, 30 or 100 whatsoever, if it is greater than 25 and if it is less than 1, then it is an invalid entry. So what you have to do, just check the variable n. So whenever you have to check a variable, you have to use the decision flowchart symbol. It helps us, the decision flowchart symbol helps us to take decision because whenever you check for a data, it can be either true or it can be either false. Just let, let me explain you this thing. What I will do inside this decision flowchart symbol, I will compare the variable n. I will just check if the value of n is greater than equals to 1 and the value of n must be less than 25, sorry, 26. It would be less than equals to 25 and you can also write less than 26. So you have to check for this, check for the variable n, right? This would be your statement. Now remember that if it is true, then you will go down and you will just calculate the discount. This is when the value is within the range. Within the range means, let's suppose if the value is 7. So 7 means that if n is 7, it means that yes, n is greater than and equals to 1 and n is less than 26. So it means that yes, for value 7, for value 20, for value 23, this statement will be true. So you will go to yes and move downward towards your flowchart. But if it is no, no means that if the value would be 0 or if the value of n that the user inputs is greater than 25, then this statement becomes false. So, if it is an invalid entry, what you have to do? You have to go up and ask, just, you have to output the same message again so that the user will enter a valid number or the number that must be within your range. So, yes, this is all about how you are going to incorporate this input validation. Okay, after that, once you are sure that the number is within the range, number of tickets that the user input is within your given range, 1 to 25, then you will calculate the discounts and you will check how many tickets are there that the user wants. So first thing is that there will be three cases. Just let me recap the discount cases that we have. Remember that there will be no discount. Let's suppose D is a variable. I'm just writing down D is a variable to store discount for a buyer. So let's suppose if the number of tickets, we know that according to this question, let's just go again here. According to this question, it is said that if, just look at this. If 10 tickets are bought, then the discount is 10%. It means that if it is less than 10, then there will be no discount. 
but if it is 10 and more than 10 it will be a 10 percent discount that is given to a buyer and moreover it is mentioned that if 20 tickets are bought the discount is 20 percent so it means 20 till 25 because the validity is still 25 so 20 till 25 a user will get a 20 percent discount so what you have to do you have to first of all just note down the cases of discount so remember that if the number of tickets are from 1 to 9 if the value of n is from 1 to 9 then the discount is zero the user will have no discount and if the number of tickets are from 10 to 19 then the discount would be 10 percent or in terms of decimal it will be 0.1 of the total cost and if number of tickets are from 20 to 25 then the discount will be 20 percent or in terms of decimal it is 0.2 so these are the three cases so it means that you have to check the value of n let's suppose starting with the first case here you have to check that if n is less than 10 then there would be no discount so let's just do it here checking after knowing that the n the, the value of n is within the range now the second decision would be to check the value of n if it is less than 10 less than 10 means that if it is yes then there will be no discount because we know that if the tickets are from 1 to 9 then there is no discount I'm just placing all this information a little right here so that I can make the flowchart easily. Okay, now let's see. If it is no, if it is yes, the value of n is less than 10, then you have to make the variable discount or you have to put the discount value 0. Use a process flowchart symbol because you are assigning a variable with a value. So use a process flowchart symbol. Now next is the second thing. If the value of n is not less than 10, no, then what you have to do, you have to check if the value of n is less than 20. Less than 20 means that you will get a discount of 10%. So here, check the second thing that is n is less than 20. Okay, if it is yes, then remember that now the discount would be, just give me one minute, here. Now you will change the value of d. Let me make a nice rectangle. Okay. Oops. Now you have to put the discount 0.1. And we know that it's 10%. So in decimal, it will be 0.1 of your cost. 0.1 discount. Put the value 0.1 in the variable D. Okay, next. If it is a no-no, no-no means that the value is not less than 20, it is greater than 20. Then you have to make the discount 20% because, because we have already checked that the value is less than 25, sorry, 26. So now the value will be, if it is greater than 20 and it is less than 26, so it is within the range of 20 to 25. So it's already mentioned in your question that if it is greater than 20 and if it is less than 26, then the discount would be 
So make the variable d point two that is twenty percent. Now this is all about the discount. Now you have set the discount for each of the value of n according to the quotient. Now let's calculate the cost. Now just do one thing. What is that? You have to join all this yes yes statements here with the flow of the flow chart. What I mean? I mean that you can see here that this is disconnected. So now you have to just move it here. When you assign the value of discount, then you have to move towards the calculation of your cost here. So you will just connect all of these discount process flowchart symbols with the symbol here with the main symbol here or with the step where we are going to calculate the cost. Now let me explain you the important thing that how you going to calculate the cost of the number of tickets that a buyer gets or buy according to the discount. So it's pretty simple. We know that each ticket is of $20. Let's suppose the cost C is the cost of one ticket that, that is $20. Now what you have to do, we know that the number of tickets are in the variable N. When we multiply 20 with the number of tickets N, we get the total cost. Let's suppose if the number of tickets are 2, then it will be $1.40. If the number of tickets are, let's suppose if the number of tickets are 5, then it will be $100. So this is a normal formula. When there is no discount, that you just multiply the cost of one ticket with the number of tickets and you get the total cost. But when there is a discount, then you have to subtract that discount from the cost that you calculate. So what you have to do, the discount is D. And when you subtract the discount decimal, from 1, then you will get the decimal that is actually the cost that you, your buyer needs to pay. It means that point 0.1 is the discount, but when you subtract it from 1, 1 minus 1, 0 0.1, then 0 0.9. This is basically 90% of the cost will be paid by the buyer in case of 10% discount. And if it is 0.2 or 20%, then you have to subtract 1 from 0.2. So that 0.8 means that 80% of the cost will be paid by the buyer if he gets 20% discount. So what you need to do, you need to just multiply $20 with the number of tickets and multiply it with 1 minus d. 1 minus d means that this will give you the decimal that you have to pay or the percentage of the total cost that you have to pay for your tickets. Like 1 minus d. It can, if I just let me just put all the cases into this particular formula. Case number one is. If there is no discount, D equals to 0, then $20, the cost of 1, multiply by N, and then 1 minus 0 is 1. It makes no difference. Just multiply $20 with N, and you will get the total cost. No discount at all. Now, the second thing is that if the discount D value is 0.1, it means discount is 10%. Then $20 is multiplied with number of tickets N 
and then you will multiply it with 1 minus 0.1 that is 90% of your cost multiply by 0.9 when we multiply 0.9 with our cost it means that 90% of your actual original cost is the amount that you have to pay okay so similarly for the third case that is let's suppose if just take the same thing with the value of n let's suppose the value of n is 15 15 tickets means it is greater than 10 that's why you will get a discount of 10 percent so if there was no discount then it is only 20 multiplied by 15 that is maybe if i'm not wrong it is 300 dollars yes but since uh, the buyer will get 10 percent discount so when you multiply this amount the actual cost with 0.9 so you will get 90 percent of dollar 300 so it means that you will be paying 270 and the discount of 30 dollars is given to you so this is how the formula works now let's take the discount of 20 percent point two now same formula twenty dollars multiply by number of tickets multiply by one minus point two okay now let's put the value of n that must be greater than 20 20 or greater than 20 so let's suppose it is 22 so dollar 20 multiply by Oh, wait. Multiply by 22. And then you have to multiply the cost with 1 minus 0 0.2 is 0 0.8. So that you will get 80% of your cost. If I will see, if I will not consider this discount, then the cost would be 20 multiply by 22. It's 440 you the buyer would be paying 440 dollars if there is no discount but since the number of tickets are greater than 20 so he will get 20 percent discount or he's going to pay just 80 percent of this 440 dollars so it will be 352 352 means that he's going to get a discount of $88. So this is how the formula will work. Now, let's just write the same formula here so that once you get the discount, then you can simply calculate the formula or calculate the cost of the tickets. So just do one thing, use another variable with the name of cost and then assign the value to it that is 20 dollars 20 multiply by n that is the number of tickets and it is multiplied by 1 minus d you are subtracting the discount okay now once you calculate it and then the final thing is you have to show it to the user so the output message would be in a parallelogram just write down output your ticket tickets cost remember that the thing that you write in commas will be printed as it is and then the thing that is not in commas that is basically the variable and the variable value is usually shown to the user but not the variable so on the screen the user will see your ticket cost and after that the cost value that is calculated here will be visible to the buyer so the final and the last thing is the end of the flowchart so just use a terminator flowchart symbol 
and write down stop inside it wait for it s t o p so here we go this is the end of this flow chart i hope that it is clear to everyone